What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit new for this channel at least. We're doing a prop trading challenge. So we are here with FTMO and a great, you know, excellent platform. If you don't know what a prop firm is, it's a firm that gives traders funding, right? So if you don't have your own money to trade, if you don't, if you want a larger capital base to trade, if you don't want to risk your own money, if you want to venture into new asset class or markets like Forex or futures, well, you can go to a prop firm like FTMO and you do a challenge. And once you pass the challenge, they fund you money to trade, right? You keep 90% of the profits. So what you're looking at here is a $200,000 account challenge, right? I began this challenge this week on Thursday. Um, you can see we're up to three, $203,703.83. So our profits, um, you can see realized P&L down here in the bottom right, this first uh, week is $3,700. Now, how does the challenge work? Well, once you make 10% on the account, which is 20,000, so once we get the balance up to 220,000, you pass the challenge, you get funded a real money account with 200,000, you keep 90% of the profits. There are some rules. You cannot have a 5% drawdown in one day. You cannot lose 10% of the account, so a maximum drawdown of 10%. So 180,000, if we hit that level, we fail the challenge you would have to start over you do have to pay for the challenge you can look at the pricing on their page um, but you, you do get that payment refunded once you make your first withdrawal from the live account if you get to that stage okay and so pretty cool they give you this journal here uh, where you see your kind of your average profit your average loss your win rate and things of that nature pretty cool and and i see i haven't seen this before you can actually go into each individual trade um you can you know put a picture of a chart uh, when you open it put a picture of a chart when you closed it so i'm gonna actually i'm not gonna use this now but for the live account i'll be using that to to kind of journal my myself so pretty cool there what i want to do with this new kind of video is go over the trades for the week so i thought this maybe you guys would find interesting if every weekend we went over the trade and the profits for this week. Now I'm very uh, upfront, transparent as always. I've already told you guys this is a demo account because I'm doing the challenge, right? I, I expect to pass this in a couple of weeks and we'll be trading the real money account. Um, always transparent. Um, <laughs> you know, we're always trading the interactive brokers account. That's a real money account with the stocks. We've done these challenges in the past, right? We traded some prop in 2022 in the old account. We withdrew five figures um, from, from a large account, a million dollar size account, but I did end up losing that account. So we can go into that in a future video, right? There's a lot of psychological factors that come into kind of managing more money than you've ever managed before, right? It becomes like monopoly money. So I figure it's better this time around, you know, I've taken a year off from the prop and um, I've had two, two kids, right? My two babies and i have um kind of grounded myself i've I finally settled down home office and you know start with the smaller account because it does let you scale up right you can scale if you perform well the two hundred thousand um, dollar accounts they can they can scale you up to 300 to 400 to 500 and eventually even to a million so it's better to to do it this way um, than to just be blowing your money on super expensive accounts um, right off the bat Okay, so that's FTMO. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they are kind of an OG in the space. They've been around for one or two decades. They're a very trusted company um, based in Europe. Okay, indices fell this week, indices crashed. We caught this kind of early, right? You see the analysis, we were looking for, you know, Nikkei coming up to our shorting levels, looking for potential shorts, right? Um, BTC entering the sell zone as well. So we were on this um, kind of the whole time. ASX watching for this, this, and then this came to our, even the S&P, right? Um, there was a double bottom, so I wanted to play it long, but I was looking for the pullback to entry. That pullback ended up being a whole bearish move, right? And so our first trade that I took on this account was this one, right? ASX, the Australian Stock Exchange Index. Looking for a one hour bear flag break to short towards some of the buying targets. Okay, and so let's explain this first setup. We go over here to Oz 200. We have the four hour chart here on the left. I was watching this head and shoulders where you have, you know, left shoulder, head, right shoulder breakout. So I was looking for a pullback too long, but I noticed that we put in this red shade flip candle, right? So I'm like, oh, it looks like we, you know, maybe there's a shorting opportunity on the way down. Uh, after all, I just showed you that I already identified Bitcoin was weak. I identified that the Nikkei was weak and the other indices were coming down. So what I saw was maybe there's room to short. I confirmed that on the one hour because on the one hour, what we had 
was this double top, right? Let me explain this double top. We went over yesterday um, how to read momentum, right? How to make $100 a day trading stocks. And it's the same thing for uh, every asset class, right? So we have a double top here with divergence. Why do we have divergence? We have green candles, no green candles. That's, a, that's divergence, right? We have this divergence where the green pendulum is getting smaller and the red pendulum is getting larger, right? Then what happened? We came down in this kind of impulsive down move, right? These four bars in a row, four hours in a row, very strongly with a heavy pendulum. And what we did was we got a lower time frame red tag. Look at the lower time frame bias bar, it tagged red. We got the pink dots showing up, right? So from green to pink. So everything has shifted to red. Even the Jupiter EMA here, you can see it was green, but it tagged red in between the double top. That's a bear sign as well, All right? So everything has shifted to red. Um, we're in this bear flag and I was looking for continuation to the downside. We put in this evening star. Then I like that this candle had a bit of a shakeout um, and this candle even had a bit of a shakeout above the whole flag. I love that when that happens and we crashed, right? Now, unfortunately, I took profits right into the 618 right right into the 618 around here around this green line is where I took profits um, and you can see that was a three thousand dollar trade and you can see it on the chart right here the bear flag short boom to profits right here because there was previous structure here and again because it was the 618 and I was thinking hey this is possible head and shoulders that was a big mistake I should have trailed I usually trail however I'm in a kind of different mindset in this competition trading since I'm trading um, to win the account for the challenge, uh, this kind of take profit mindset. Um, and so, you know, you win some, you lose some. Sometimes you'll, you'll regret it, sometimes you won't. But what I should have done is trail, at least trail by the one hour, you know, by the candle high, boom, boom, boom. I could have easily made double or triple, easily a $10,000 trade. And actually, if I have stayed to the bottom, probably all 20,000, you know, that could have won the whole challenge in one trade. Anyways. Um, so we took profits at the 618. Now, another thing is if I just read the momentum, I would have seen that this candle pink dot to red dot closing below the moving averages. Now we're tagging red on this time frame on the higher time frame, right? So that is a reason to maintain bearish at that point in time. You're closing below the 618. You're tagging red. You are not looking for this head and shoulders anymore because the bias is now very bearish by all signs of momentum. All right. And so that and that was an easy trail, right? Because you, you know, you can see every single candle just kept accelerating. They couldn't make higher highs. One candle made higher highs. And that was barely right here, this white candle. Right. Um, and then just accelerated sell off on Friday. OK, so that was the first one. We then had the Bitcoin trade. Um, so the Bitcoin trade, you can see right here in this case, I sold two contracts. And look, and this is a case where we trail the stops and we only won 700, but in this case, I would have been stopped out. So you can't complain, right? You have to choose a philosophy, um, you, you know, if, you, if you're gonna take profits and that, that hurt me in this case. In this case, I tried to trail and you know, it was a small win. Whereas if I took profits down here, right? Um, you know, this was 700, let's say this would have been another two, $3,000 trade perhaps. So the Bitcoin setup was, um, so the Bitcoin setup stopped out. The Bitcoin setup was this, right? And you can see it posted right here. So you can read it. Let's go look at Bitcoin on the chart. Okay, so I was looking for this sort of ABCD move. We have a sort of rising wedge with divergence as well. Um, and But if you look down at the one hour, um, what happened here was, it was, it was here, right? So this was a down move, right? You have red dots, fresh red tags. When we have fresh red dot, when we have red everything, um, what we're looking for is pull back to the moving averages to short. You're pulling back to the moving averages. You're putting in divergent green pendulum, right? Both time frames are tagged red. You see the heavy volume on the sell-off. You see that the light volume coming back up. Okay, so I believe it was this evening star right here rejecting the moving average. Um, you know, which, which I shorted, right? And you can see these were previous support levels acting as resistance, right? And there you can see that, uh, you know, if I would have taken profits back here, you know, maybe at this level, um, you know, more aggressively, I would have gotten closer to my goal. However, I, I was trailing my stop, you know, probably trailing a little, and I stopped, stopped out here. Um, if I left the original stop, actually, I wouldn't have been stopped out. I would have written it down. Um, on to Friday as well. Yeah, we didn't make higher highs. So I'm not sure this was when. 
sell here at 230 on this day okay i think it might have been here yeah yeah it was here actually there you go we did make higher highs my original stop would have been stopped out right it wasn't this evening star that was an excellent setup that set you up the next day as well which i missed but my setup was here this was the fresh red tag boom this was the pullback this was the pin bar candle this was the breaking down of the pin bar candle okay so that's the setup right here um let me just check real quick the 15 minute chart yeah, so here, if you go down one time frame, right, here in the 15 minute, which I might have looked at, you had that divergent pendulum and you had that red shade flip up here after a bit of a shakeout, right, a big breakdown, an evening star right here. So I don't recommend going to the 15 minute too often, um, but, but that's something else you can do, right? Then the next day, um, then the next day was Friday. We had the, the Mexican peso trade, which was the kind of the stain on the week. I don't like this trade. Um, I never trade the pair so well, and I took it off my watch list. It's never, and, and also Canadian. You've probably heard me say that before. The CAD and the PESO, I never trade them well. I'll probably eliminate the CAD one day. So what happened here is, is you can see when you don't follow your system, you get into trouble, right? And so what I was doing is I was looking for this kind of random double top, um, and I was distracted by this, and here it is. So in the one hour USD Mexican peso, this double top right here. Now, the problem with this double top is look at the way up. On the way up, we have a green dot showing up, the Jupiter EMA turning green, we're above the moving averages, and the bias bar is green, it's never been red, and the lower time frame actually got a fresh green tag. So yes, there's divergence and there's no Jorbit dots, but that doesn't mean you know everything's on the way up making higher highs and getting fresh green tags. What I should be doing is looking to long pullbacks, not just trying to trade a random double top, right? And that's why we read the momentum. And I guess it was right here. Like, this is not even top. Like, it didn't even, doesn't even look like a double top in hindsight. Um, and of course, we had FOMC data. Um, so what happened was, you know, boom, and we started trading back. And I, I believe this could have been a shakeout and gotten the bears out. And so I re-entered one time, but of course we continued upwards. Now I am proud, and this was one trade, these two positions, you can see they're both at 12.11. And then after FOMC, this was one trade. They, they both happened kind of simultaneously. So I did reduce my size, right? Five lots on the first trade, just two lots on the second trade. You have to do that, right? If you're not a, you know, it's not a time to be aggressive when you're not at your account highs. If you take a loss or two losses, reduce your size until you get back to account highs. When you're in a winning streak, then you can get aggressive, right? What you never want to do, a cardinal sin in trading, like the worst thing you could ever do is like lose, lose, and then increase size. Like if I went, oh, five, I need to make this 1,500 back. So let me trade 10 lots now. Well, if one lot, 240, 10 lots, I would have lost 2,500. Now, now I would be down $4,000, right? Instead of just being down, you know, just about two, right? So double, and then you take a revenge trade. Never do that. So I am proud of myself for reducing size drastically and going from losing 1500 to losing just 200 200 you know 500 less than 500 right and then getting away from it hey it's not working let's go somewhere else okay so that was just a bad trade i wasn't following the momentum and my whole system is predicated on the indicators and i'm reading the momentum fresh green tag no way i should be looking for shorts okay i mean i figured it was long-term resistance um you know right here this night oh you know I, I try to convince myself right this wick over here 1900 psychological level um but you know at the end of the day we have a fresh green tag that means buying momentum has come in okay and yeah i mean this wasn't even really there was no good candles right okay then the last trade on friday was the FTSE, right the FTSE one ftse FTSE 100 is the uk uh the british uh, stock market index and so we entered this and you can see we won kind of all of this money back for the most part, right? And so what does this trade look like? UK 100 cash, you can see it right there. In this case, there you go, right? I kind of took profits at the very bottom and that worked out well because I would have made much less, maybe a couple hundred only instead of, um, you know, over 2000 um, on this trade had I not taken profits, but I did it properly. So you know there's there's a happy medium this is why i like to trail stops on this first trade i just took the profits i just took them here for like i just closed the order right um and then on this um on this trade i i didn't trail so it kind of worked against me 
the, the, the best way to do it for me is just trail, right? You drag it down, drag it down, drag it, drag your stop down every candle, every couple of candles when you make a wick or a high, um, and that's it. And so, you know, you trail very tightly, especially on a Friday, and you're gonna secure more, uh, right? And so let's look at the FTSE trade. We also posted that here. There you go, indices continue tanking. I'm looking for the FTSE. When I said this, what happened was on Friday, the indexes were tanking. Like we were, we were, you know, we put in this giant red shade flip, um, you know, that was Thursday, right? So Friday, we were still tanking, making lower lows in the morning. We were making lower lows here, okay? On the four hour, lower lows than the whole week or the whole month, whatever. Um, the NASDAQ, same thing. It was making lower lows on Friday. Uh, the Dow Jones, right? Lower lows getting wrecked. Even the small caps uh, got wrecked, right? And so at that point in time, the FTSE was still about here. You can see Friday, Friday morning, right? 2, 2 p.m. this candle, right? 2 p.m. Um, and so let's see. This is the candle I got in on, this this one-hour candle right here. And this uh, 14 p.m., so 2 p.m. And so let's go look. Yeah, look, by 2 p.m., um, everything else was vertical. It was way lower lows already, right? If you have a structure here, we were way lower. So, and it wasn't just the United States stock markets, the DAX, the German vertical, more vertical, right? The the Nikkei, the Japanese vertical, right? And we made a whole video about how we're bullish the yen and we're bearish the, the Nikkei. Well, look at the Nikkei, down 5%, outperformed everything else, or, or got, you know, double more than double the loss of everything else. And so go watch that video if you're interested in the Japanese yen bull market, which I think is going to be bearish for the Japanese stocks. If you're going to short something, you should be shorting the Nikkei. And also the, the ASX. Um, look, by 2 p.m., you know, boom, lower lows. And so it seemed to me that the FTSE was tanking uh, or lagging, and it was providing a, a lag trade opportunity, right? Because by 2 p.m., you know, we're still at these levels. We're still kind of at these levels. We're, we're actually, we were testing up here. I saw that reject come down, turn black again, and I saw that this was gonna close. I probably got in a few minutes early around here, rode it for two hours, right? And I trailed my stop. Let's assume this is my stop above the first candle. You know, when the second candle closes, you know, when the third candle closes, then the fourth, this white candle closes, I'm trading by the candle highs, right? And so I got stopped out around here. And sometimes you get lucky, and that's why I like to trail, right? Um, you can see like, you know, here was a white candle, kind of a hammer candle. Some people might think, oh, that's too tight. Sometimes when it's just falling, it's just falling and it, it won't spike up. It just goes sideways and then continues, right? Continues lower, right? And so that's why I like to trail my stops. And so that was the FTSE trade. And um, yeah, that, that led to a $3,700 week. So I'm about one fifth of the way there, right? Four out of 20 about one fifth of 20 20 percent of the way to the profit targets if you guys enjoy this kind of video let me know and i'll upload them every weekend so you guys can keep tr uh, progress you can watch the shorts throughout the week where i'm kind of going through some of those um you know I, i'm gonna try to live stream tomorrow but i'm not sure right it's the only day that i don't have babysitting so it's kind of a bad idea to try to live stream sundays um we'll see what the, what the missus says uh, maybe better to do these kind of videos on the weekend. Um, maybe, uh, who knows, maybe I can live stream during the week, during the mornings for like live trading. I don't know. But for now, I, I like what I'm doing here with shorts. And I like, um, you know, kind of going to make these evergreen videos. And, and these kind of videos on the weekend where we can um, where we can track the progress of this. Guys, if you want to follow along, subscribe to the channel. If you want to follow along in real time, subscribe to the Discord and you get um, access to the indicators. Remember, the prices are going up next month. It's still less than a dollar a day. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you enjoy this kind of video, these trade reviews. And um, yeah, indices are tanking for now. You gotta be bearish on absolutely everything. We missed this crude oil trade. Oh my God, it hurt so much. It was so clean. Break down fresh red tag into the EMAs, fresh um, bearish engulfing, boom, fucking fell off a cliff. This one hurts so much as I was wasting time with the Mexican peso. Love you guys. Stay safe. Cheers.